All right, Blues, City take on Spurs in the early kickoff on Saturday. A place where we've been rather successful of late, but let's hope we can carry on that run. I'm joined by Barnaby from Spurs on TV. Nice to join you. Hello, mate. Thanks for having me on. How are you feeling after the North London derby defeat? Deflated, to be honest, mate. Deflated. Uh, but, you know, when you don't play your best team in your most important match or one of your three most important matches of the season, then you're asking for it, aren't you? Yeah, I suppose so. But looking at this game, Spurs have had a mixed season, haven't you? Ninth in the table. Got some wins under your belt, though. Some clean sheets, which I imagine you're quite happy about. Yeah, so everyone was very worried about the start. Uh, we lost at home to United and then a, a few draws in a row. But as I said at the time, I thought if we could get a couple of wins on the spin, then those draws actually wouldn't look too bad. Because if you see, we're actually one of the few teams who's only lost one match this season where everyone else is kind of dropping a, dropping a couple of games here and there. So those draws will add up. And I think most importantly for us, um, this is how I always like to look at it. The games that we've won are games that we didn't win last year. So we're actually ahead of the, the eight ball in terms of how we were doing last year. You've um, made a few new signings in summer. Uh, I think the standout one is obviously Hyung Min Son mm -hmm. from Bayer Leverkusen. How much has he impressed you so far? Yeah, he's only played three games, but he scored uh, two, two, in, uh, two goals in those games. No, he scored three goals in his last two games even. So uh, he, he's really settled in quickly, which is something that foreign players at Spurs don't tend to do. Uh, he's got lots of energy, really does pick up some lovely positions between the lines, giving the players uh, on the ball options to get it into his feet and uh, is a naturally two-footed player, which again, you don't see nearly enough of, not only at Spurs, but in the Premier League uh, in total. So yeah, he's looking good. I'd also like to say um, Deli Ali, who we actually bought in January, but uh, we sent back out on loan to MK Dons. He has started the season fantastically and looks like, I mean, I can't tell you, we haven't had a player who breaks uh, beyond the striker for years from midfield, and he is just desperate to get into the box the whole time. So um, look out for him as well. Harry Kane has played a bit like Aguero has this season, which is a strange thing. They were both the most prolific strikers in the league last year. Um, there's obviously going to be question marks over whether Harry Kane was a, a one-off. Mm -hmm. But why do you think it is that he hasn't found his shooting bench yet? Uh, we don't make enough chances for him. It's as simple as that. He, he had one guilt-edged chance against Everton where Mason put him through with a lovely through ball. And he kind of it was almost like he had too much time to think about it. He hadn't scored, I think, in four at that point and uh, he was thinking about it and Howard made a good save. But apart from that, we haven't got him in behind, so everything that he's snatching at, and he is snatching a kind of shots from outside the box, or last night he had a good scissor kick uh, cleared off the line, which would have been an amazing goal. But I'm not bothered because he's doing the hard work that we never ever saw Emmanuel Adebayor or Roberto Soldado do. He's holding the ball up, he's running the channels. And um, also, you know, last season he scored 31 goals, but he didn't start a game in the Premier League till, till November. So really, he's got a month and a half or a month and a bit to, you know, get a couple of goals and he'll still be ahead of the game, as far as I'm concerned. I think that that worries me more than anything in that City have got this thing where players come into the game having not performed all season. And I'm mm. really worried that it's going to be on Saturday where Harry Kane does score. But yeah. we'll see. Who is the City player who worries you lot the most? Well, I was going to say, good news for you is that Spurs have that exact same thing. Uh, we have the thing where teams teams have never haven't won away from home for a season, like Leeds back in the uh, in the nineties. They come to White Hart Lane and turn us over, and where players who've never scored for that club or who've never haven't scored in a season or whatever come and score. So, uh, to answer your question, Aguero, obviously, like you said, he scored uh, eight in his last few games against us. He just has the knack of putting it in the net against us, and. Um, Best player, best player in the league in terms of strikers, just natural finisher, such quick feet, uh, takes up some lovely positions. And um, you know, if you if you get the ball into him in good spaces, and I've no doubt that he can uh, he can definitely test Hugo anyway. Whether he can get past the sexy Frenchman is another thing. <laughs> um, a bit of a curveball. Who who will play? Who you would say is Spurs' weak link? I know that Fazio is one that's been batted about, but I don't think he'll play will he? No. Who is Spurs' weak link? Uh, it is a good question. We've actually tightened up a lot this season. In, in previous seasons, I think I'd have found this a lot easier to answer. Um, but with the signing of Alderweireld, he's tightened up uh, the centre-backs. Him and Jan Vertonghen have a good relationship. And then with Eric Dyer coming in and playing uh, defensive midfield, we really are a lot tighter because he kind of slips in to make up a third centre-back when, uh, when we're behind the ball. So uh, in terms of uh, weak links, it's not as easy to say. Um, at the moment, what I'd say is there's no uh, kind of 
clear idea, as far as I can tell, who our left back number one is. Uh, so whether it's Danny Rose or whether it's Ben Davis. Ben Davis has played the last few league games. Spurs fans seem to prefer Danny Rose. He certainly offers a bit more going forward, I think. So it could be um, it could be attacking the left back uh, to to see you know whether that's uh, an unconfident player playing there or whatever might be your best bet. Yeah, don't worry about that. I'm sure Jesus Navas will be playing on the right. So I'm only joking. Well, I've, he's a strange player, Jesus Navas, isn't he? Because um, you know he's quick as fuck, obviously. If you excuse my language, but also you know his end product from what I've seen doesn't always seem to fit the bill. Bit Aaron Lennon like, dare I say? Yeah, we we do like him, but he can be quite uh, frustrating. Let's have a score prediction. I think what we'll do is we'll have a score prediction now. But what we're going to do is we're going to meet up with Barnaby before the game at White Hart Lane, and we're going to have a bit of a wager. We're going to have a bet, see who's going to win, and the team who lose their respective fan camera is going to have to do a bit of a punishment. So make sure you check that out on Twitter before the game. But let's have an advanced score prediction. Uh, I'm going to be positive and I'm going to go for a 1-0 victory. Uh, we've won our last two games 1-0. I think we can try and nick an early goal and then just let it be like the Alamo, like it was for you against West Ham. Brilliant. Well, uh, Blues, let us know your score predictions in the comments below. Thanks very much, Barnaby, for joining us. Make sure you check out Spurred On if you want to see some Spurs content. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. Like the video, comment below, score predictions, team predictions, the lot, and we'll see you again soon.